Hello and welcome. Back in early spring 2022, I analyzed the NI on makeup of nine popular brand of liquor and I wanted to revisit this project using the GCMS to check the organics in those same nine happy companion for a comprehensive look at their chemistry. Now, there's some preparation work involved since the GC does not like water and liquors have quite a bit of water in them, which is why they are such a healthy drinks. These were all prepared the same way. I measured 50 milliliters of liquor and added 50 ml of DCM in a separatory funnel to extract most organic in those two phases. The top one is the aqueous phase we can discard and the bottom layer is the one of interest to analyze. I know this can be a boring process so I won't show you everything you can thank me later. This bottom layer is then filtered on dry sodium sulfate to remove as much water as possible before evaporating most of the DCM since it is more volatile than what's in it. This has the effect of uh, concentrating the extract for analysis. Is it safe to drink around all these chemicals? Yes, I'm wearing safety glasses. The leftover concentrate is then stored in amber glass vial, ready for injection. I'm using the 1701 Westec Colon, specifically designed for alcohol, aldehydes, and organic acid. I uh, tested it down to one part per billion for sensitivity and got acceptable results. Keep in mind that some molecules are also a bit sticky and difficult to get rid of from one injection to another. Also, my solvents are supposed to be HPLC grade, but obviously contain impurities in the form of tetrachloroethylene in my DCM, and I suspect my methanol to have traces of toluene and xylene. This will not be the first time I find these in my analysis, despite careful practice and clean new equipment. Anyway, I injected 5 microliters of my extract using a 150 degrees injection port and keeping the column at 80 degrees for 23 minutes. I keep the mass spectrometer on standby for the first 3 minutes to allow for the DCM to pass and not fuck up my detector and filament. Let's call all the annoying and tedious method development part and get straight to the results. As you know, ethanol is the molecule of interest when the brewer's yeast digests and breaks down sugar, but there is many other chemicals metabolized during fermentation. One major byproduct is isobutyl alcohol. And we can see this uh, large initial peak in uh, 1800 tequila. Both whiskey brands, Hennessy, Bacardi, and a faint trace in the uh, Jagermeister. Limonene was also found in rather large quantity in every single liquor at the exception of rum and Bacardi. Limonene is uh, naturally occurring, but it can also be used as a flavoring agent. Vodka was again the cleanest drink and the only one I found containing methyl salicylate for headaches. Vodka and Fireball were also the only one with linalol in detectable amount. This chemical occurs naturally in cinnamon, so fireball makes sense, but it's probably an additive in vodka. The spicy in the fireball is largely due to the cinnamon flavor, and in particular cinnamon acetate as expected, but also found in rum, of course, and in Jaeger for some reason, but not in Bacardi. Notice the trace amount of benzoyl chloride in fireball. Benzoyl chloride can and have been used as a tear gas, so yeah, ouch. Jaeger and Fireball shared a lot of chemical similarity again with a eugenol. Eugenol is naturally present in licorice, so not a huge revelation. Eugenol has many uses and is added to e-cigarette refill for the clove flavor. A few oddities like formic acid and thiazole in Bacardi, aminobenzoate in brandy, and benzoyl chloride in Fireball as already mentioned. Furfur was found in Hennessy and both whiskeys or whether bourbons, because bourbons are made with malted barley, which is the origin of the furfural from what I can read online. The presence of this molecule indicates either a blended straight whiskey or an authentic malted bourbon. If I had analyzed a straight grain whiskey, like uh, Old Elk, for example, and found furfural, I should be able to get a lifetime supply or something to keep me quiet. So what's the general takeaway here? Well, as expected, the darker liquor are rich in many compounds. Just like uh, with an ions, vodka is the cleanest liquor and Jaeger the dirtiest, with uh, Fireball and Hennessy as a tie for second place. Vanillin was only found in Fireball, but I was expecting it in rum as well. Benzoyl chloride was definitely in Fireball, but in such a small amount, it did not get selected in the analytical report, so I wouldn't worry about it. It's interesting to see natural limonene or as an additive again here. That stuff is everywhere. This was another fun analysis, a lot easier than the previous challenge. Speaking of which, I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to thank Kim Delic for his support. I enjoy our collaboration and hope to work with him again. If you enjoy chemistry videos, Kim Delic is a highly recommended channel. And I think this wraps it up for 2024. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Happy holidays, happy new year, and enjoy your drink with moderation, of course.
Damn it!